Okay, so we're going to be focusing on the second part of using a chi-square test and also the Fisher exact test. We're dealing with categorical data, so there's not going to be really any uh, too much visual stuff in here because we're dealing with uh, tabular data, categorical type data. So um, we'll go from there. So um, you might have a um, a uh, variable where your outcome might be yes, no, but you might have different levels. Uh, of treatment or different levels of whatever you're wanting to compare against. So our previous slides focused on a two by two table. In this case, we've got four rows by two. So how do we assess whether or not there are differences with this type of data? So that's the focus of this part. Now, when you have these uh, two by two tables that are actually not two by two tables, they're larger, these contingency tables bigger than the two by two. Um, the chi-square test um, can still work, but there's a greater likelihood that you'll have small numbers in the cells of the table. So for our purposes, if we have five or less in any of the, 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 the uh, cells in the table, um, we're probably not going to want to use the chi-square test. And in some cases, if one of the cells is zero, some stat programs will reject the uh, use of the chi-square test and tell you, you know, this is an, an appropriate test. So if any cell is less than or equal to five, um, we're going to do, well, in this case, we'll do the Fisher's exact test. So there are a variety of other exact tests that are out there, but uh, Fisher's is the most commonly cited one, most commonly used one, to my knowledge. So, all right. So... I'm asking you now, which is the smallest cell of the eight? So we're not interested in these totals, and these are the names of the groups. Um, we don't care about the totals. We have eight, eight cells. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So out of these eight cells, which one is the smallest? We see one. Um, so if any of our cells are less than five or equal to five, we should be thinking, how are we going to test this data? So which test should we use since this cell has a value of one? Should we use the chi-square test or Fisher's exact test? So I would hope you selected or said um, to yourself Fisher's exact test because that would be preferred over the chi-square test. So we might be interested in comparing from our Kenyan study whether or not families who do more water treatment at home have less illness. So we have a lot of people that in our study, we had about 400 people who didn't have access to publicly treated water. So they may use chlorine, they may filter the water, they may use sunlight, they may use an, uh, another method, particularly uh, boiling was a commonly cited method in that study. So when we were assessing, you know, these different variables for whether or not they had an effect on illness, we had to do certain types of statistical tests. So first though, um, we need to somehow code these and group these all together. So remember from the beginning, I'll go back. I had these slides here where we had different levels of treatment, like no treatment, one method, two or two, one or you know, actually this is like two methods or more they use in this case these people re reported using three or more methods so how do we take data from here and make it look like one, zero one two or three and then how do we create a variable called treatment like an actual grouping variable like treatment so i had to code the data so we had to generate this new variable called treatment and what we did was, since the data were coded as one or zero, if you use chlorine, that's one. If you don't, that's zero. So we added these up. So the use chlorine value plus the household filtering value plus the sunlight value, if they use UV light from the sky to disinfect water, or if they use another method like boiling. So if they answered yes to all of these things in the survey, they would count as four. If they answered to just chlorine and filtering and nothing for these, they would have had two. If they answered yes for chlorine and yes for sunlight, but zero for filtering and zero for other method, they would still have two. So 
we created this variable called treatment that has zero, ones, twos, threes, and fours, all possible. And then we didn't have data on everyone, so it says that when we did this command, 22 values were generated in Stata. So something was missing for 22 of the 800 some odd people in the study. Now, we also had people who had publicly treated water, and we weren't really interested in what treatment methods people with publicly treated water did. We assumed that their water was already better. So we said that if they have publicly treated water, we want them to not um, count in this new variable called treatment. So we set this them as a dot for missing data in this variable treatment. So we've already generated the variable, so now all we can do is replace. So we say replace the treatment variable of one of zero, one, two, three, or four with a dot. So replace treatment equals dot or missing if they had publicly treated water. So and it requires that double equal sign. So if they have publicly treated water, then we wanted it to be missing. So it changed 343 observations. These 343 people with public treatment have now been excluded from this uh, new treatment variable that we created about household treatment methods. I'm not going to get too much into how the code data on your end, but if you ever had to, this is just a little bit of information on how to do so. So now we can check to see how the data look. We hit, we type in tab and then treatment, and it shows that we have 481 of the roughly 800 and some odd people that were in the study, because remember, we threw 343 out as missing, so they weren't coded here. They're just uh, dots. They don't exist in this treatment variable set or treatment data set. So we had 18% of the people had no treatment, 34.5% said one method, 35% said two or two methods, 11.64 said three methods, and then there were two individuals, 0.42%, that said that they used four methods. So maybe that's a really, really small number, and it's not going to give us a lot of statistical um, power to work with at all. So we might consider doing something with this. So let's collapse group three and four into one group. So if the variable treatment was called four earlier, let's make four become three. So let's replace treatment equals three if treatment is equal to four. So if it's equal to four, then we're going to make it be now three. And then we hit tab treatment and we can see that we switched the 56 and 2 to now it added the number 4 to the 3. So this group here is people who use three or more treatment methods. So the 56 plus the 2. So now we've got our, our 481 people who had no publicly treated water and we know how many steps that they use at home for treating their water. And we may be interested in seeing the frequency of disease like vomiting in the previous 14 days of their interview and how many treatment methods they use at home. So these people use no treatment methods and the percentage of them reporting vomiting was 12.5%. Percentage of these people using one method was 9%. Percentage of people using two or more methods was 6.5%. And the people using uh, now, these were two methods. They reported 6.5%. Three or four methods, only 1.72%. So, initially, when we look at, at this data, and I put that row variable in there so I could see the percents, initially, when I look at this, I see, you know, looks like there's a difference here. You know, 1.72% versus 12.5%. So, no treatment versus doing a lot of treatment. To me, initially, it looks like something's going on, but we need to do a statistical test. I can't just rely on my own gut opinion. I need to back it up and use statistics. So again, of these eight cells, 0, 1, 2, and 3, by 0, and 1, of these eight cells, 77, 11, 151, 15, 57, and 1, 
which of these cells, of all these cells, is the smallest? And you should see number one is the smallest. And because it's the smallest, should we use a chi-square test or a Fisher exact test? So hopefully you know to choose the exact test. So instead of typing in chi-2, like we had done previously, we can just type in exact at the end of our command. So tab, treatment, vomit 14, comma. We don't need to have the row in, in there, but we can if we want. So comma, row, and then exact. And when we do that, it'll give us all kinds of output that will eventually end like this. So we'll get all of our table information and all of our row information. And then we'll get this Fisher's exact p-value of 0 0.088. When you see that 0 .088, what does that tell you? Is there a statistically significant difference? So Fisher's exact test p-value of 0 .088. Well, I would say that since p is greater than 0 .05, we have insufficient evidence to conclude that there is a statistically significant difference in vomiting among the groups. Notice I'm saying among the groups because we are comparing all of them. We might be interested in doing group one versus group three here in a minute. But in this case, zero verse one, verse two, verse three, all these kind of combinations, Fisher's exact test says no statistically significant difference. All right. We could also do the chi-square test, but it's not the best approach, and it gives us a p-value of 0 0.096, which also would be not significant, but I wouldn't recommend doing this um, because this has a, a, a value of one. Now, say you want to compare treatment group zero, no treatment, versus group three. Because you think, you know, group three's got to be different from group one. I mean, 77 out of eight, or 11 out of 88 vomiting versus one out of 58, that's got to be different. How do you do this two by two table comparison? So you could recode the data and do a lot of generate and replace commands, or you can do a shortcut. And let's do the shortcut. You can do the shortcut by the command or by pointing and clicking. So you can click on statistics, then summaries, tables, and tests, then frequency tables, then table calculator. And then it'll let you enter the data. You can put in whatever data you want into this. Um, the space separates kind of the, the rows. So this is the row one, column one, column two. Row two, column one, column two. And then we can click on all these different things that we want. We'll just do the Pearson chi-square test, even though Fisher's exact test would be best because there's a zero in this example. But that might not be the, those may not be the numbers you're interested in. So we're interested in comparing the 77 and 11 versus the 57 and 1. So in that previous box from here, we're going to put these numbers in. 77 space 11 backslash 57 space 1. So you click those two buttons from the big box, click those two, and then it gives us this. The output by Stata is provided. Here's the command, tab I. So you don't even need to use the point and click. You just type tab I 77 space 11 backslash 57 space 1 comma. If you wanted to just do the exact test, just type in exact. If you want to do both, you can type in both. Even though chi-square is not appropriate, I still included it for you to see. All right. It gives us the Pearson's chi-square test, which is a p-value of 0 0.020. Um, again, one's in there, instead, and that's less than five, so we shouldn't use that one. And then it gives us Fisher's exact test. It's, you know, are they equal or not equal? And the p-value of 0 0.028 says that since p of 0 0.028 is less than 0 0.05, we have reason to believe that there's a significant difference between this group and that group. In this case, this was the people with three or more treatment methods methods versus no treatment methods. And then it also does this one-sided Fisher's exact test where you would compare it against 0 0.025, saying that one's greater or less than. And again, um, that would also be statistically significant. But our main thrust was this one. So you should be able to do that. And that um, 
will conclude.